Hello everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. This is Promoting Safety Engineering and my name is Sean Tobi. Thank you for coming back. And uh, yeah, I've been seeing your comments on the other videos. Uh, please don't forget to like this video uh, when you watch it and uh, whatever ideas or comments or suggestions you have, please leave them in the comment section. Now, uh, on our channel, what we do every day is talk about safety engineering, safety engineering for those engineers out there. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is how to actually break up a set of PNIDs into hazard nodes, actually breaking it up, not just marking it up. I did a video on how to mark it up electronically. But th this time, it's all is going to be about how you read the PNIDs and how you break them down. If you want me to do a video on reading PNIDs too, I could do that. Just let me know in the comment section. So, uh, so I'm just gonna we're gonna jump right in, and uh, I'm gonna show you two very two things. Firstly, a PFD, which is a process flow diagram, and a PNID, which is a uh, piping and instrumentation diagram. So uh, I have a video explaining the differences. Now I can break it down a little better, much better for you so that you can kind of grab it, understand it because it's necessary when you're working, uh, doing a hazard. So I, as I explained in my videos, my earlier video on PNIDs, PFDs, block flow diagrams and all that, a PFD is sort of a condensed form of a PNID. It's like a high level, so there's not a lot of details in it. So what would be um, ten pages of a the ten different pages of PNIDs can all be in one page of a PFD. So everything is just condensed in there, not enough detail, not fleshed out. And then when you go into PNIDs, then it's there's a lot more detail in that. So now this system, it's a uh, it's a condensate export system. So condensate is produced from uh, gas plants and then so it's kind of a liquid that's left off. So a lot of uh, companies find it useful so, and some don't, so they sell it. Some don't sell it, they, they use it and they refine it. And so it just depends, but this company is exporting it now. That's what's happening with PNIDs. So there's the um, exports of the of the condensates and then below this last this line is for the condensates all the way from the pumps to the loading amps and then we have the also we have the below we have a produced water line to a tank and then to the pump and then the loading amps for the produced water so now we're going to have to look at it critically and then decide how we want to break it into nodes so if you look at this, starting here now, this is where the drawing starts from. And it's good to understand it. So the flow comes from the condensate surge vessel header. So there's a line that goes into the pump. This pump is P5302 A and B. And that's uh, condensate disposal pumps. If you look in here, that's condensate disposal pumps. So from this, all the way from this header to a shutdown valve to the pumps that's a flow meter here then from the pump it goes into a tank this is called t5301 and that's what you have here condensate storage tank so from the condensate storage tank it flows uh, into the p5301 a and b and p5301 a and b is the condensate export pump so now, when you come out of the disposal pump, the condensate uh, disposal pump, the line splits into two. There's a bypass around the tank, and it comes here just before this vessel, and then there's another line going into here, the tank itself. And this line would be kind of like a, a, recy a recycle line. And uh, so looking at this, from the tank, it goes into the pump, as I explained earlier on condensate export pumps. And then from the condensate export pumps, it goes into the V5301 condensate storage day tank. From the condensate storage day tank, it goes into another set of pumps. 
which is called condensate loading pumps and from there it goes into the loading amps so you can see how the flow goes in the pfd so now there's a pnid matching this pfd exactly so you go to that pn so you go it starts here normally these pnids might be rearranged although the process person might have helped you arrange it but you having a good knowledge of pnids will let you know where the lines are and so also keep in mind that anytime you see clouded areas those are the newest revision that's the new changes on the pnids because now if you put in new stuff all over this pnid who's going to know if it's not clouded so the best way to make it obvious that something new has been added to a drawing stuff like it's clouds that's the official way to do it so now you can come down here so this is the header that we talked about here that's this line here shows up here and it flows can you see it's now much longer it flows all the way to the condensate disposal pump so from there that is this if you look at this is an sdv that's the sdv that is here this sdv here so it flows from here into the pump this is the flow meter all the way so you go to the next page and this at the pumps you can see 5302 a and b and that's condensates disposal pumps you come back here you look at it p5302 a and b condensates disposal pumps so you got that so you know where the flow goes to you come back to the this and you can see all this here do not worry do not get bothered about it it will take some time you just have to piece up where each line is coming from and where each line is going to but first know the, um, where the main flow is going and that's this way so condensate storage vessel v5301 so from this pumps if you go back to this so going into here mm, okay let me have a look at this okay so from here we're going to all the way down to the condensate storage uh stock to condensate storage tank that's g040013 these are all part of learning how to do pnids because if you come here this join is 001 look at 0012 so that's how you find your way around pnids come here this is g0012 so that's telling you that this line comes into this page and that's it here and if you look at the number on the line six inch pf three three five three blah 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 that would be the line number of this line and that's it here six inch pf three three it goes all the way and then that's g0012 that's the page number that's this and you can see the line so it comes in here goes through this and then this line goes into the storage tank that's page 0013 and if you look at this is 4 inch pf 383 so that's the main flow line 4 inch pf 383 so go to page 003 three. sorry this page 0013 and then you can look at the line number it's the same coming from G4 0012. So it flows into the storage tank. That's condensate storage tank. Flows in, flows out. There's a line that is uh, normally closed going to the server pit, but that's not in use. So this is the main process line. Come back to your PFDs, look into that, okay? You can see this is going to the server pits here. So the line this is it but the main line we're looking at so this closed valve here is this closed valve here so this is the line we're looking at and that's the open valve here that, this here so it goes into the pump pump p5301 a pump uh pump p5301 a that's this condensate export pumps 
goes into the condensate export pumps. That's this on the drawing. And from there, it goes into V5301, which is V5301. That's condensate storage D tank. So you go back to your PNI disk. So remember from this tank, you go all the way, look at this line number. It's uh, 6 inch, 5316. It's a condensate pump on page 0014. So you go to the next page, which is page 0014. Make sure you have the same line, 6 inch, 16 NI. So it comes into this and which is uh, the condensate export pumps. That's this too. Flows all the way into condensates, uh, into condensate. Uh, there's a bypass line to the condensate storage vessel. And then this is to the pump. So this is the main line. So all this, remember, I'm still explaining how to break your stuff down into nodes. But this is how to understand the PNID before you do that. So you can see now it comes into the condensate storage day tank, V5301, which I mentioned earlier, condensate storage day tank. And from there, it goes into the loading pumps. Look at the lines. Look at the page number, G040016. That's the same here, uh, 6 inch. 10 and I, if you go to the next page of page 16, that's page 16. And if you look at this line, can you uh, 10, yeah, 8, 10 and I? Is that an 8, 6 inch? Okay, must have been an expander along the way. So you look at this lines now condensate loading pumps package. That's uh, 1P004 ABC. Come back here. This is 1P004 ABC. And you come all the way here. Condensate loading pumps. And from the condensate loading pumps, it goes to the condensate loading ants, which is what you have here. So after this, flow all the way here. Then you come to condensate from this pumps, the ABC. You go all the way to the loading ants. And these are the loading amps. But the flow comes in here and it splits into a loading amp one, two, three, and four. And that's all for the top line for the condensate. And then you come below, you look at okay, so this is the this is for the produced water. The line starts here. There's an SDV, there's a manual valve before an SDV, then there's the tank. There's the produced water tank, and you see T4301. That's it right here. Flow all the way from there into the, this is produced water, produced water export pump, 1P007 A and B, all the way to the loading apps. Remember, there's also the server pits for the produced water. You can come in here, and uh, if it that's meaning if there's off-spec uh, produced water, it goes into the server pit. So that's when this opens and this is closed and then it goes into the server pit and it's sent somewhere else than this. So that is the that's the process flow diagram for the produced water side. And then I come back to the drawings and go into that part of the... So you can see, as I said earlier, there's a cloud here. As the cloud starts here, it means it goes all the way into the... Uh, goes to page 19. This is 18 and this is 19 here. And you can see it starts from here all the way. This is a shutdown valve the SDV into the tank. This is the produced water tank. And from the produced water tank, it goes to the produced water pumps, the water loading pumps package. And then from there, it goes into the loading amps. So you You've seen it in the PFDs, you've seen it in the PNIDs. You have like an idea of what's happening. Then you have to come back. Okay, so the best to now do is actually go and look at your PFDs and say, okay, so how do I want to break it into nodes now? Since I understand how the flow goes here and also in the PNIDs. So you look at it, you say, okay, so you could either break it up into by flow or by pressure regimes or by it could even be temperature it's based on what you're most comfortable with and what you agree 
with your with uh, the Hazard team? Should we break it into nodes based on uh, pressure, based based on uh, flow, based on? It's up to you. So, uh, but the best I, in my experience is to do it according to flow. Although when there there's a major pressure regime change, you wanna kind of factor that and also break it down pressure wise. So looking at this now, it's just a, a, like a single simple flow all the way from the sod, condensate sod vessel header all the way to the loading amps. So you can take this pumps, this tank, it's a major equipment and this pump, take them all as one equipment, um, as one node. So I have from here to here as one node. I can have from here this tank and this pumps to the loading amp as another node. And then this, this is just a simple line, a tank and a pump and loading amp. You can take this as another node. So that's three nodes now. So I would just do something like this to mark it up quickly and easily. Uh, say from, from here all the way to uh, use this. Then this pump, take it again all the way from here and all the way to here. Mm, I would like it, uh, yeah, I think upstream the SDD is good enough. So that's one node. I would come here again, take another node. I would uh, change the color as I start the work. So I could say um, this will be a red node. Let's say it's a, just to change the color for it to easy to identify. Red. Yeah. I'll say this is node 2. Then I'll come down here and mark up my node 3. So, what color should we make it? It's up to you, really. I can say blue. And then I have that. And then make it all up in blue. So I have it in my PFD. So this will be what we guide us in our uh, so in our PNID marking up. So I come, I have to come here now and say, okay, remember I said the clouded areas. These areas are not clouded because they are entirely new. These are entirely new, but this was an old drawing that was modified. That's why you have this. But because all these are new, they're not modified. So it's just it, you don't need to cloud everything. But if it's an, a, a drawing that's already existing, you need to cloud the new things you bring in. So, okay, so we said this header is the beginning and that's here, green. For, yeah. So we come back here, pick up our, and then start off our marking up. Come from here, go all the way to here. We mapped it up, yay! And then, so from here, we go into page two. Two, we start just like we did here, going into the pumps. This pump A and B five three zero two. Same here, pump A and B five three zero two. We mark it up. Mark it up. Remember, we are not going to the server bit. Anyway. 
the same here because this header is important. And then come here. So you have some work to do here. Yeah, you need to understand the flow here. So you look at this. Okay, this is going to coming from page 17. So you know this line is coming from page 17. You can uh, this line is going to the condensate storage tank. So this is the line going to where we're going to. So definitely that has to be marked the right thing. And also this is going to the storage vessel. You have to mark that the right thing. Yeah. Then you have this going to the storage tank. That's 13. That's here. Good. You don't forget that. Uh, have 40, 4 inch 14 NI. Come back up. Place 4 inch 14 NI. 4 inch 14 NI. Don't forget that. Have this going that way. Perfect. All these order lines, you still have to note them. Remember, this is going to the search vessel. So this is going all the way back to page one here. And that would be somewhere up here. So you can see coming from page 12, you can see the line number 4 inch 13 NI. You come all the way here, you see it 4 inch 13 NI. So it's still part of the node. Green it up. Look at that. You look at this. Mm, this is produced water. You want to leave this and see that where it's coming out from. Maybe there's a valve there. It's always good to have node boundaries. You have to think of that. That where does this node start? Where does it end? And how does it not spill into other nodes? Like are there valves there to close it down? To make sure that this node can actually be isolated sometimes it's not going to be a perfect isolation but it's just for you to break it down into manageable parts so start from here look into this okay hmm. from export pumps we'll come back uh, from export pumps from loading water pumps and this is from condensate pumps 2014 so you go into your next page that's here. Remember we said in the main, uh, we take it from the tank all the way to the pump. So we come back to the tank. Of course, same old, go up, come here. Some people like to mark around the, the major equipment. It's not necessary, but if you feel like it, whatever, whatever. You're happy with and then remember this lock close valve you come back here spot it lock close valve that's not part of our work because we want to deal with the normal operation this is for as a oh did i make a mistake i don't know got something buzzing around here okay perfect So we're looking at our export pumps and then we go to the next line here this is the export pump remember on the pfds too we took the export pump as part of the first node I'm going to try to make this into a series. After breaking them down into nodes, I would have uh, do videos of the actual HAZOP so that you can kind of have an idea of how, we, how after breaking it down into nodes, then how you go into your HAZOP and make it work that way. This is to the drain, so you don't have to mark it unless you want to HAZOP the drains as a node. And then you have Remember, this is going to the storage vessel. This is uh, condensate disposal pumps outlet. 
So this was that line going in 12. That's here from export point. So this is the line. Bring it up again. So that's how you're going to find out where everything is going. Because if you look back up at that line number, that's the one I just marked. That's 4 inch 15 and I. It should be the one. 4 inch 15 and I. Yeah, this is it. Perfect. So we green this, we green this up. And then, so we're about finishing the first node. And then we go into the last page of the first node and stop it somewhere here just to make it more manageable. So we don't want to put a lot into this node. Let me just make it quick here. Yeah, just upstream this uh, line, this valve. So you have that spotted out. And then, so go back to your PFDs, start where it ended. Oh, okay. No, that's not where I am. So I have to take this back a bit. I think it's somewhere here. If I go back here, up there, there are the valve. Hey, look here. Okay, this valve, this valve, then this PV. Looking for that SDV. Maybe not properly represented. Anyway, you mark it up to here. I would uh, take this, that PV as the SDV, but then there's a manual valve just upstream it, and I'll stop it at that manual valve. So I could do this. Then I'll drag this all the way back here. Perfect. So that's for this. And then, so we come here. So this is red. That's a red, uh, that's a red node. So I want to start from here with a red. Red. Perfect. So come here, go out here. Remember this uh, 10, 6 inch 10, and I we go into the loading pumps. 1P um, to the pumps first, 1P004 ABC. Then you can see. Uh, so it must have been an error, 6 inch, 10, um, 8 inch. So those are things that the hazard could help you pick up. So this should change to 6 or 8 or you confirm from the process engineer. Then continue your markup so you, you can point that out from the hazard. And just do this. Just to to make it easier, okay. There are three lines. I just make it smaller and mark them all out easier. So, You mark that down as the uh, second node all the way into the loading lines. Then you come here also, same here. This is a header, a header that takes to condensate loading arms three and four. So of course you want to mark that up.
then of course you still need to your normal flow line you need to mark them up it doesn't really matter how you mark uh, the direction you use to mark them up as far as those lines are covered it helps a lot during the hazard when you when they are colored already so you just know the direction you are going in and everyone is on board with that the best way to do it is there are two ways to actually do it for the hazard view. I'm not going to go into these lines because this is normally closed and this lock closed. So anything going there would be a jeopardy, double jeopardy, and you don't want to look into that unless you actually hazard pin those lines. So you don't need to hazard those lines for now. So go all the way up here. Take the flow from the loading ions. Come down, come down. Yeah, and then you do the same here. Start from up here. So this is your node 2. Remember the green was node 1. Red node 2. And uh, in here, pick it up. Go around. Go around. Go around. Go around. Go around. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. We're through with node number two, all the way at the loading amps. So we now have node number three. And we're starting from Omingo, produced water from module one and module two, that's a fire. Same, so we come back here. So uh, what did we make node three? A uh, blue, right? So we come here. So of course, this is that line. You have to pinpoint it. So you start from here. Uh, that's why it's clouded. Remember, I explained that anything that's clouded, it's uh, remember, I, uh, once I, I said it because it's clouded, that means it's a new drawing, um, it's a new addition to an old existing drawing. So, this was an old existing drawing, and because they needed to tap off from this uh, flare knockout drums, yeah, okay, free liquid knockout drums, you need uh. We needed to actually take that, uh, modify a part of the drawing, and then from there, this is an entirely new drawing, so no clouds. Take our line, continue, come from here, away from here, from here into here, and then of course, we go back. You can see it here. This is the tank 4301, all the way to pump 1P07, and then the loading amps. Tank 4301. Yeah. You don't need to look at the saver pit. You can hazard it as a node if you want to, but it's it's up to you really. So this is the line going to the server pit. That's why everything is locked it was going into it. Because it's not normally in use unless there's a process offset. So we out here. This line is closed. Then we come here, take our flow all the way from here. And uh, yeah, I should I could be a little bit more, more neat with the way I'm handling this. Sometimes this happens because you can click exactly on that part of your drawing so you do this then you drag it up perfect see it's well and then to the loading amps and so one more page and this is the loading amp get here I like it come move up move up yeah we're home so that's it so everything's been broken down now 
from the very beginning, start from here, go to the second page. This line is coming from page 17. And where's page 17? It's 15, 16, this is 17. So there's a line here that it comes from. Okay, so that's this. So this is the line going to all 12. So you can go back here and although it's locked closed normally, so having that in mind, you know that there's hardly going to be flow coming from here. So you can make this, uh, yeah, red is for the second line. Okay, red. So you can make this red to say that this is, but well, it's normally closed and there's no valve on it. So there's really nothing your has up in. And the same here from produced water. Um, remember, uh, this is 24 inch, 22 ni. This is, uh, that's page 17. Just to confirm. Yeah, 4 inch, 22 ni. Perfect. You can see it here. And that's what comes all the way. That's this point and then we still have this going to page 20. This is 3 inch 43 and 43 and I go to page 20. Mm. 3 inch. Mm, can't seem to find it. It could be an error in the PNID, or maybe I'm the one that's just not giving you enough time. But you kind of get the drift. So, yeah, we've marked everything up now, ready for our hazard. So, go back here, you can see everything, your node one. You could also write it out here, just do stuff like this. Uh, you can put in a text, say, uh, Now, it's always good to do this so you have an idea of what node you are on. Um, node 3 is blue. Node 2 is red. And node 1 is green. What? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. So you have that all done. So you have your node one, node two, node three here, and yeah. So that's for your PFD and for your PNID. You have your node one. Uh, get rid of this. Have your node one. You have your node two, one, one, one. If you write it all at the top of each page, node one, node two, node one, node two. And then when you get to the red, node two, node two, node two, node two. Then when you get to the blue, node three, node three, node three, node three. Yeah, so that's it. And I explained that the best way to do this is uh, with, a, with a hazard team is you have this mapped out electronically, and then you get a colored printer and print out all the hazard, um, all the hazard PNIDs for the participants in the workshop. If you don't want to do that, do all black and white, and just before you start the hazard, sh show this to them, run it, run it through to show how it's been broken down, and give them colored markers or colored felt pens to mark up their drawings to follow exactly what you marked up electronically. Yeah, so I would be going forward to uh, that's the end of this one, the end of this uh, class. Uh, but I'll do, I'll make it a series. So I'll do the has ups 
of node 1 in a video, do node 2 in another video, and do node 3 in another video, so that you can actually see how it all, how it all should pan out in the hazard. So uh, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Sean Toby again. Please don't forget to subscribe. More videos coming out. And also like the video. It really, really helps me when you like the video. Thank you very much. You have a lovely one. Yeah, bye-bye.